Hey, so today we're going to be working on this uh, 74 VW bay window bus. I'm going to be replacing the CV boots. I did this job about uh, 18 months ago and uh, learned a lesson about buying cheap boots because they're already worn, ripped. I'll show you in a minute. So my first advice is to uh, spend a little extra money, do a little extra research and get a good quality boot. What I'll be putting on today is from a company called Lobro, German made, and from what I've read that should last a lot longer than uh, what I've done here. So here we go. So first step I've done is just to block the front tire here so that when I jack the back end up the bus won't roll on me. Okay so under the bus I've got my floor jack positioned under these two bolts that's in the center of this back axle. That's a good place to lift the center of the back of the bus. Okay, so I'm under the bus. There's my torn CV boot. I've got the bus jacked up so that I can turn the wheel. That'll turn each of these and give you better access to each of these bolts. So what I'm doing here is just going to break them free, but not completely remove them. And if they're on there really tight, which is good, just use this wrench to give me a little more leverage. Okay, six. So all six of those are broken free. Now we'll work on the wheel side. These are looser over here. That's a little concerning. Okay, so I'm just going to put a zip tie around this part just to mark the transmission side. Of that axle and I've got my six millimeter hex head. Okay, so got the uh, CV joint off the bus, it's on the bench here. First thing I would do is re clean it up, read the label on it. This one says Lobro West, or W slash Germany. So this is a German CV joint. In my mind that's worth rebuilding. If it said something else, MP or another um, secondary brand, off-brand. At this point I would probably just replace the whole CV axle with the joints and the boots and everything on them. I, in my mind that's a lot easier and you're trading the same quality for quality. Where this is a German joint, again I feel like that's worth rebuilding so we're gonna go ahead and proceed to um, to take this boot off and clean it up and re-grease it and put the new boot on. This is what we're going to take off of there. A pair of snap ring pliers and a screwdriver. There is a special tool you can get that opens these up. I don't have that, so I'm going to just use a snap ring tool here. So basically, I'm just going to get in here, spread that apart, and then once I can get a screwdriver in there, and then that just comes off. Okay, so now the joint can just slip off. Set it there. Go ahead and pull. That's bad quality. I looked, cleaned another one up to look to see if there was a brand name stamped on it anywhere. There's not. Uh, this clip here, the easiest way to get these off, there's a little tab on this side. If you just stick a screwdriver in there and twist it, that lifts that tab off. That separates that. And then usually I have to use a screwdriver just to kind of start this to get it up over this little hump. All right. 
first thing I'll do is slide the new clip on there. Um, they gave me a bag of six new bolts. Nice thing about this bag, figured out. Cut about that much off of it there. That bag, in German it's called Baggenschlicken. And what that does is help protect the uh, collar of the boot from these sharp teeth. I really like these grease bags too, the way they're designed. Just cut the corner of that off. Just get a little bit of Grease on there for the bag and schlicken. And then it's a lot easier to get that boot on. And then that bag, bag and schlicken, just comes out, throw it away. And so my skinny part of my collar here is stopped between those two bump stops. I'm going to wait, do this clip at the end. And these will just come apart. If you twist it 90 degrees, that'll release these balls here in this cage. And that'll just come all the way out. There's another ball. And same thing here, this inner race. Rotate it 90 degrees and it'll allow the rest of these balls to come out. And then it will come out too. Um, there, is, there is some wear spots, so you can see where the balls are wearing. And that's the reason I'm going to switch the orientation of the axle when I reinstall. Hopefully to get it to wear in a new spot. And like I said, extend the life. So some of the CV joints I've read have three flanges or three um, grooves on one end and one on the other. This one only has one groove on one side. So I think the the standing rule will be whichever side has the most grooves goes away from the axle. Diagram that I've used it talks about the small space on the inner ring lining up with the large space on the outer ring. It talks about the camfered edge and the on the cage and the camfered edge on the inside ring facing toward the drive shaft and the side that has more rings around it, more grooves, is going to go away from the drive shaft. Okay, so again, this end is going to go towards the shaft. And I'm going to roughly line up the holes on the flange here with the holes in the joint okay I've got a larger socket here I'm just gonna tap that home that exposes that groove for the new clip And then I just want to make sure that's all the way in the groove. Okay, I'm satisfied that that's in there. I'll note too that uh, Lobro sends you the dish washer. Uh, Bentley tells you, the Bentley book tells you to leave that off. I left it off last time and I didn't have any issues the way the, it performed or now that I've taken it apart I don't see any wear that I don't like. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that washer off as Bentley instructs. I'm going to take my grease now and 
pack it on the back side first. Just kind of squeeze it in the cavities here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the front. And the outer cavity. Whatever I've got left here, I'm just going to squirt in the bag or the boot behind it so it'll continue to provide grease. And then I'm just going to take a couple of these bolts <coughs> uh, and make sure that we're lined up correctly. I know they won't go in this way for installation. I'm just making sure that this um, flange is lined up with these holes and that goes through the other side of that flange. Take a pair of channel locks and just kind of seat that flange. Okay. And I'll take those bolts back out. Cover that up so we don't get grease and dirt in there. I happen to have a pair of Oliker ring pliers that I use installing sprinklers. So this is an Oliker ring, so it's just the perfect tool to crimp that. Make sure everything's in that collar. I like the fit of this. It's not so tight that it uh, begins to break the rubber, but it's tight enough that it's not going to slip off of that shaft at all. Okay, so to turn these new bolts that came with the Lobro, Lobro uh, boots, this is a 12-point attachment. So I got this at Napa fits perfectly. This 2304 is under six bucks. And then I drive this end with a 5 16 socket. I also wanted to mention that last time I used the this uh, kind of wavy washer from the hardware store. And I was not, uh, I didn't like how loose those bolts were this time when I went to remove them, especially on the wheel side. So this time I went ahead and bought the original uh, cupped serrated washer. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pre-assembled uh, these space washers and the bolts with the serrated washers on them. And uh, Okay, so <clears throat> under the bus here, since uh, the wheel side is a little bit lower to the ground than the transmission side, I'm going to go ahead and attach that one first. Uh, that way there's just less of an angle to work with. So I'm just going to pull off the what's left of the protective glove here. Grab one of these. threads correctly. There's the advantage of being able to turn that tire so that you can get it in a spot that's easier to work with. Now on the transmission side. Okay, there you go. They're on. Thanks for watching. Good luck.